Folks, welcome tonight. Uh, this is the first kickoff of public forums uh, on uh, building projects, not only for schools but the town. I'm Dr. Greg Lillian, the very proud superintendent of schools here in North Vancouver, and I have a few folks to introduce tonight. Um, in the back here, we've got our town manager, Melissa Rodriguez. Thank you, Melissa. Melissa and I meet weekly, and uh, she's got a tremendous partner working together um, on behalf of the town and the schools. And the director of the administrative services from the town, Lori Burzlaff. Lori's here tonight. Um, we've got a couple of school committee members here tonight. And you'll notice we're here too, um, because after two, then you, you know, we'll be a meeting. <laughs> we're not going to buy the other meeting block. So uh, we've got from the school committee, Helen McGarn and Pam Charleston. Thank you. Um, Atkinson principal, Aaron O'Loughlin. Big round of applause there. Um, Chrissy Harrell, really? Chrissy Harrell. Oh, this is Chrissy. She, Chris represents the Atkinson Subcommittee. Um, they did a ton of work this spring. Um, and I'm going to turn it over in a minute or two to Dr. James Bailey, um, who will be giving a presentation going through some slides. Um, but I also want to say if you're an Atkinson teacher, raise your hand. All right. You're very good teacher. They're all the front row here. Outstanding. If you're an Atkinson parent, Can we get any community members? Outstanding, outstanding. All right, so um, before we kick it off tonight, these projects are incredibly important for the town and the schools. Um, the school committee made a recommendation to the facilities master plan group uh, and the town manager, and these projects are going to impact North Vancouver for many years to come. Um, Jim's got to go through that tonight, but they're incredibly important not to just take on class size and space. But to really design spaces that are the best for teachers to teach and students to learn. You know, this school is, I think it's 64 years old, Jim. 57 years old? Yeah, it's 57 years old. Um, you know, schools just weren't designed to have the spaces needed to ensure equity. They weren't designed to have physical therapy and OT and EL and the specialized spaces in addition to regular classes. So um, these projects, again, are incredibly important. Um, to the town and the district, and they're not just school projects. You'll see tonight that there's a project taken from the youth center and the fire department as well. And uh, again, I just want to thank the town manager and work with the town so closely um, on a project this week because this is something um, that's had a lot of input from the community so far, and it's a project that's going to be here uh, in Pakistan town for decades, and it's an overall big picture. Um, of doing what's best for kids in the neighborhood. So, Dr. Gilly, the assistant superintendent of finance and operations, um, who's also been hanging out with some Thank you very much. I hope it's not 64 because it was built the same year I was. So, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, this is going to be a long process, but already has been a pretty long process. Uh, if you took the survey, you went back last year, uh, you know, when we started the subcommittee, we weren't based on the survey results that I know to both the community and the staff. Uh, we're doing meetings now. Once the school committee has now made an official recommendation to the facility master plan, um, that's what we're going to go over tonight. So we'll get educated as to what the projects are going to look like. Um, and then coming out of the, the holidays into the new year, we'll really be around getting the public um, supporting these projects going into the town meeting. So as Dr. Sullivan said, these are absolutely critical projects to the schools and the projects, these are the projects that are just getting finished with phase one of the master plan. Uh, if you don't recall, we did the kitchen gym, we had the town hall renovation, the school administration building, uh, DPW renovation, fire station number one, which is up on high school, uh, ADECC, and the theme center, which is, if you know, it's incredible, but up where, um, what is it, the Knights of Columbus? Yeah, the, the corner of Sutton. Yeah, and it's Sutton. Sutton. So that's, that's getting done now. The projects for phase two are, as you can see here, Atkinson, Franklin, Kittredge, the middle school, um, Brad Street, we're looking to put a, a 
efficient inside the gym on, on that building. Um, so I think it was probably station two and the MDU center. Are all projects that have been part of phase two. For us, for the schools, the focus are um, very We've got renovating the older schools, as you heard, this one is 1964, Kids Ridge is 1949, uh, Franklin and Thunder in between there in the 50s. Um, and so they need to be updated for a lot of different things. We want to make sure we're equity across the district. If you look at Thompson, Thompson has a lot of space. Some would say more space than we need to start walking those ramps. But it's got everything you would want in a 21st century school, and the others don't. And so we want to, we want to provide equity across the district for all our students. We want to make sure that we're providing the spaces that are necessary for 21st century learning. When schools were first, these schools were built. You had students in rows, 30, 35 a class, check the classroom, they did everything in there, specials, everything. They weren't allowed programs. Nowadays, as you guys know, we have all the programs that we provide. We do specials outside of the classroom. There's a lot of different spaces that are needed now, and you want smaller class sizes. So schools that used to accommodate 600 students now maybe 400. We also want to be able to impact class size, not just now, but in the future. So one of the things we've done is involving projections to get a sense of how much growth is going to take place over the next 20, 30 years, so how much space we need in our schools. And we try to get to eliminate the four of the classrooms, uh, which two of them are here, and three of them are Franklin, well past when they were supposed to be. These were built in the 80s, as one of the slide shows, and the expected life of those portables at the extreme was 25 years, and we've gone well past that. So we had those assessments I want to introduce. Today we have from MDG Al Clemens and Frank Tedesco. Also working with us is Bill Chin and Bill will get a couple of the younger presentations. But MDG are the consultants that have been working with us. They did building assessments, and you'll see some of the pictures. I also want to just remind you, if you don't already know this, if you go on the school website and you go to the school committee heading and click on that, in there you'll find school capacity and subcommittees. If you click on that, it takes you to our page that has all the information we've generated on these projects. So you'll find the building assessments, the full assessments are there. You'll find the final report that was done. You'll find the space analysis that was done, the research that we did. The survey results, so everything is there that you can possibly think of for um, these projects in this case. So uh, if we don't do it, we're not sure our students. So what the building assessments found, as you can see, these are older schools that need renovations, the mechanical systems need to be modernized, the schools need to be brought up to one code, including Atkinson and Franklin, never had a sprinkler system, fire suppression system in. You know, it's, it's fine to say you know, brain power of rating, that doesn't mean it's good. It just means you don't have to do it until you do a major renovation. And so we're found getting around to that as well. They need to be ADA requirements, again, brain power of rating, that's not a good thing. We need to provide environments that are more conducive to learning. You got to be aware, and maybe everyone's aware that we can burn every useful space that we can find convert closets, convert storage rooms into learning spaces that aren't meant for that, but it's the best that we can do right now. And we want to do a lot better. And we want the ability to improve either indoor air quality. You know, we've just found this during the pandemic. It's not that it's done yet, but our systems are older and you can the air quality is up to standard, but it could have been better if we could have used um, higher grade filters. But the systems would have been taxed too much to use those, so we had to stick with like burr and dynamite. We've all heard the terms now, but um, we could only put burr and dynamite there. Other systems might have allowed to use a more burr 13. Um, so, why the systems would have allowed to do that? And as far as that goes, what we're looking for is that all the schools in our 
scientific tests, space to allow for growth, have space to impact class size, have appropriate support spaces, have dedicated appropriate special spaces, and provide environments conducive to learning. So what does that mean in your school? Well, here in actually, built in 18, yeah, 1964, at the middle school. And it's interesting that it was built in the middle school, and the old middle school used to be high school. But because it was, the cafeteria, which we're in right now, and the gym are sufficiently sized. They can certainly use an upgrade and a renovation, but we don't need to increase the space because they were adequate for a lot of middle schools and certainly adequate for a lot of schools. The portals would, would go, the flat roof, you can't really, most of the roof is not flat roof, it's uh, slanted, but some of it is, and that's going, you'll see in the pictures what that means. The interiors are considered mostly good to fair, but certainly need some updating. Uh, we talked about the ADA requirements and needing other water codes. We certainly have to replace our systems. The steam boilers and hot water um, would be much more efficient. The piping is 50 plus years. We've got our guys in the uh, you know, sub basement trying to repair them on an annual basis. The electrical is mostly original in state of poor condition. And then we said no fire suppression. And it has a list instead of an elevator, which is not very really conducive to um, access. So some of the pictures, uh, the first three there, the left hand corner, show the roof bubbling, cracking, and water cooling on the left roof. That needs to be addressed. A lot of our doors and hardware are original and do not meet uh, ADA requirements and clearances, same as our restrooms, the lift is not compliant, and the electrical is original and certainly outdated. Another thing we did is a space analysis to show what's supposed to be in the school per MSPA and for Mass Building Association, Mass School Building Association. Uh, so they guidelines for what the square footage should be for spaces. You can see in that second to the right column. But it shows the existing number of rooms, what that current square footage is, what we plan to have, and what the square footage would be. So you can see that we split an inadequate space for our music right now where we have a total of a thousand square feet and we should have a little over two thousand square feet for those two activities. Reading is in a room that's converted it's only three hundred square feet, it should be five hundred. Cat and kitchen you can see are certainly not great in the gym as well. But the lack of a meeting center, which depending on what year it is, what room it is in, has never been one of our never been an adequate space and it should be double the size that it's ever been. And the support spaces, you can see in special education, is less than half of what it should be. Uh, the nurse has almost half of what they should, and an OPT, OTP should be separate, and a total of 800 square feet, and we only have about 350. So this just shows how, yeah, we've got some of those rooms in these schools, but you're not dealing with what they should be. And so, I won't go through as much as I just did on Atkinson, but we did that for each school. Franklin is very similar to Atkinson in the needs, other than the fact that it does not have an application. Has anyone here ever been to Franklin? Their gym is tiny, like the classrooms, and it, that might be what it ends up becoming, is repurposed to a couple of classrooms, but it's certainly not an adequate for a gym. So, everything that we talked about with Atkinson applies to Franklin, plus they need a, um, a gym, but they don't need an elevator, because yeah, they're all on level. And so, the same idea as you see from the pictures again, these are available on the website as part of the assessments that MBG did. And it has, a whole, it has the narratives go along with a whole bunch more pictures. And we did the same analysis for Franklin. Franklin has a very nice library, so we wouldn't anticipate needing to do anything with that. Uh, the gym certainly needs to be changed out. Their cafeteria kitchen is also 
adequate um, for the test in Indiana. But all we have is that it's the same situation. And then Kittredge. Kittredge is our oldest and smallest school in the district. Um, if, if we did have a chance back in 2013 in one of the old classrooms, which you can see in pictures of the white roof in 2010. But other than that, it's good to fair or fair for condition um, throughout the building. And it's one of the, it's really restricted in what you can do if you're going to try to renovate at Kittredge. Not necessarily the site with a lot of room, but the buildings you can try to add on to that to be difficult. So the recommendation on Kittredge is to build such a close, a new one. But for all the same reasons, we need to address it. Dr. Neal, yeah. and can you see just about the ADAs? They're you know, interesting. They've got a few stairs in the nurse in the front. They've got stairs going up, stairs going down. Um, it, it's a real challenge in that sense, particularly there. Yeah, well, when the list works here, you've got something that gets people from the first or second floor. Even when they're listed and they're listed, they're going to get taken to the part of the building that you can't even access in a wheelchair because there's a couple steps up in the nursing office and then one classroom at the end. And then the middle school. The middle school actually, I don't know if you've heard, but we put in all of these buckets for MSB consideration. And just so people understand, Mass School Building Authority annually supports school projects through funding. And you submit to them they, how many did they say they got 58 for the core program this year? 58 for the core. For the core program. And they have to tell the accelerator program that doesn't apply to us. They got 58 applicants in. They choose from those who they want to have a meeting with the school district and a visit to that school. So the uh, middle school has been put in for the last four years. This, this past year, we submitted for Kittredge, Atkinson, uh, Franklin, and the school. And we had to prioritize them. And we prioritized them Kittredge first because it, the expression I kept using was we want to put our worst foot forward because it gives us the best chance. It, you know, it doesn't matter if you want to reach one, but one is the one that's going to cost us the most. And it's the one that we probably have the best chance of getting approval on. So we actually found out that we made it to the next stage with Patriots, and we had a meeting today with them, and they have a visit on Thursday, right? Yeah, they'll, they'll be on Thursday afternoon um, with you know, engineers, the architect, the folks they bring for the visit, the site visit, uh, Thursday afternoon. So we're looking forward to having them. So yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed, it would be great. Um, we'll talk about that for a little while, but basically what happens with MSBA and Kittredge impacts everything because you've got one scenario where they approve the project and they're going to fund somewhere between 40 and 50 percent of it, and that impacts how much you know, how we can do and how quickly we can do things versus if they don't approve it, then it changes our plan. And they order them to do things. Yeah, Dr. Neal, just to be clear, it doesn't mean we're going to stop it in the MSB program just yet, but we're clear of the hurdle, um, which is very exciting. Um, so we're taking that next step. And um, you know, typically they make a decision this year in December um, or as late as March. But they're thinking about December this year, to be honest with you. Yeah, did anyone think I was saying that we were already approved? No. But they just made it clear. They, they said it's a long process. Um, if we, in all likelihood, if we are accepted into the next level, then that's a good chance that we're going to be approved. There's still some, some steps that have to be taken. But this is the big one. The visit on Thursday will be critical. And I think the uh, MPG guys will be able to spend time on the edge. That's the, the big step. So the middle school. With the original one, like that's why it wasn't made a priority. For one, they had they didn't meet that final cut when we put it in, and we certainly felt like Kittredge gave us the best chance. But the middle school is definitely in need. 
Um, it's one of the largest middle schools in the area, one of the largest class sizes. We need to do something at the middle school. It needs to end. You know, there have been renovations at the middle school, but the wear and tear on a middle school and high school are much greater than on an elementary school. And so it's given me a renovation and additional space. We had talked about um, having an additional space to be science labs, because the science labs are not up to date science labs, so that would allow us to use all the other rooms uh, and free them up for the additional space. But one of the things that you have to understand, I'm going to show you some concepts of what might happen in these schools, but that's all they are right now. You know, until an architect gets in there and really starts to look at it and, and come up with the final design, these are just concepts. But it wouldn't surprise me if most of them are how we're going to do it. So again, pictures from the middle school. And I mentioned enrollment projections. One thing I want to make clear to people, enrollment projections in North Andover are a sensitive topic because anybody who is here, when they were talking about foster farms, the projections that they did were based on this short window of time. And I'll show you the graph in a second. But if you do that, it's easy to say, okay, well, for the last three years, they've gone down, they're going to continue to go down. Or the last three years had a spike, and if you project that out, you're going to see a lot more than what you really get. So, what we did is we used a large stretch of time, and we had two consultants doing all the projections to come up with what the graph already showed us, which is we anticipate about 35 students per year in growth. That's what we've seen, and that's what we anticipate continuing to see. And so, you can see on that. Right there, over the historical 34 foot 9, you can see that little peak that occurred. And if you projected that, you'd be up about 6,000 students in no time. But in reality, you can see it just because of COVID, with the blue and the orange heat. And if you project that, you think we're going to have nobody left for a month in a short period of time. But just that straight line is about 30, 35 students per year. And we anticipate the developments that are coming on and the birth rate that's happening, and that's going to continue. So, based on the feedback we got from the community, uh, there, there were options that we had put out there that included uh, lower and upper middle school, lower and upper elementary school, all kinds of different versions. But the community was pretty clear, both staff and community, that the practice was kind of the status quo, which is elementary one and five, middle school six, I mean, 6 to 8, and then high school, 9 to 12. So we maintain the current grade distribution, we maintain the neighborhood schools, and add capacity and ready to address equity, support spaces, 21st century learning, class size, and enrollment growth. Get rid of the portals and be as fiscally responsible as we can. So for Atkinson, that means getting rid of the two portals, renovating the interior, including the gym and the cap. And the exterior, although if you've been here for a long time, you know, we, just a few years ago, we did the window wall system, so that wouldn't have to change. Upgrade the electrical plumbing and HVAC, install the fire suppression, install the elevator, add six classrooms, and four to, six, four to eight support spaces. So, what could that, what's the concept? Not what the final one will be, but it very well could be, would be to add another wing to the building, get rid of the portables, and you just kind of mirror the front wing of the building uh, with one of the bathrooms still maintain some nice green space, so you can create a courtyard, you can connect that to both ends of the building, and that would be two floors just like the existing building. So that's one concept. For Franklin, again, I won't belabor it, but pretty, pretty similar plan. And there, it looks like this, where the gym is in the outer left-hand corner. There's a portable there now that would go. There's also a couple portables down in this area at the bottom, but you would kind of extend that wing on your left and then connect all the wings at Franklin. And it would be 
talking about K3 Quarter, Brian recommending a new building, and what might that look like? That's probably the time to see what possibilities are there. So you would get rid of the existing building, you could maintain, as of right now, the modular uh, classrooms that are there, repurpose them for administrative offices or even keep it in the classroom, keep the gym that's in excellent shape, and then kind of build around that. And it would fit on the site. Middle school, again, renovate both this year and next year, upgrade everything. Add those classrooms, slash science labs, and the support spaces. And this is why I always get a response. Because right now, the recommendation, uh, the initial recommendation, and looking at it, we've got a couple of uh, architects look at it and suggest, yeah, you bet that probably the corner. Might not be the case. You have a strong reaction to this one. But there is some room, kind of a the block on the southeast side where the cap is, or in front, that might be a possibility. But again, we'll let them make the recommendation to us as to what makes the most sense. And then, because we were doing this and, and identifying needs around the district, yes, the Bride Street is fairly new, and you all know you when know, we the kindergarten students in there, but funding determined the reduction in size of the gym, a cafeteria. And we have found that the chip's not sufficient. Uh, that's not a thing. Uh, large enough gym facility for that school. And so we're recommending adding the gym to where the uh, preschool playground is. Right now, that site is, would work very well. It connects right to the building, and it's, it's large enough. And we would just move the preschool next to the kindergarten, the preschool playground next to the kindergarten playground. And then the other two projects that are part of the facility's master plan, the fire thing, both of these are over here, Salem Street and Jarman Street. We've got conversation number two, which would be um, some support spaces in the front and the added bay in the back. And then we have to use that. What is that space going to be? It's four flex feet. Four flex? Hold on, I'm trying to wrap this up again. Thank you. So the fire station has an extra value and an appropriate bunk for us. Yes, we have female firefighters now, which is not a place to stay. We have female firefighters now, which is not a place to stay, according to you, which is problematic for us. And the new center is actually four additional classroom type spaces that would be added. Thank you. 
projects and empowering these projects. So that's the plan going forward, and I kind of outlined that. On the next slide, school committee made a recommendation. The Village Master Plan Committee is meeting. Um, as I said, in the September to December, when the December is going to be we anticipate making the final order. It could be as late as March, like somewhere between December and March, they'll we'll know their final decision. We've got these public forums that are occurring now until early December. Uh, the facility path plan three will continue to meet right up until March and probably beyond, but March when the warrant um, is created for town meeting in May. And I just talked about we'll, we'll have more public education and support initiatives for, from January until May that will include messaging. Cam will be involved so she can be able to attend. And the funding plan will be part of those public forums. We'll look for town meeting of um, approval in May of 22 for the design of the first project or projects. It doesn't, don't have to do just one project a year. Um, and we don't have to do one every year either. It depends on the funding that's going to be available. It might be a project and then um, not one for a year and one a year after that. So it could get extended out. But what we need with uh, phase one, which you get approved for design, and the next meeting next year is approved for construction, and maybe design of the next project, and, and so on. And that's what we'll anticipate, depending again, depending on the funding plan, when we're looking for approval for each of these projects. So all of that, any questions? Yes.
We don't want to interfere or interrupt the flow of teaching and learning. Um, we want to continue to provide that excellent education for our students. So, you know, that's really, really important in that. So, again, I think all good points here. If you're around 2004, uh, Mr. Limbert was in on the building school building committee at the time. Where your in my high school's football field is was the old high school. And if there were three, I was teaching at the time, or vice principal. We were there until three days before February vacation. They took three days, professional days for the year, for the camp. And we moved to the new building over February break for those three days. We actually got in. Um, you know, it took a while then to rebuild some of the athletic facilities and some inconveniences with that, but you know, it went much quicker when you have to so, be able to do something like that. It does take time, as you know, they, they work on students in the session. But they've worked on hundreds, would be fair to say hundreds of projects, a couple hundred projects. Uh, yeah, really experts in all the details that go along with that. It, yeah, just one sec, going back to your time, and that's why it just extended out too, because it would be great if you could leave for the summer and come back and it would be done, but realistically, it just isn't the case. So you got to break it off into chunks and you could still educate. You have anything like that? Who used to do this? They used to be on the show. Just a quick, um, like, kind of a follow up with just a timeline. So, like, other than starting and restarting the field project. Mm -hmm. So, just the thought of that construction here, construction of the middle school, like, is this, like, I don't want my kids in a five year construction area. <laughs> so, will that be taken? Yeah, I'll ask for confirmation from the town manager, but I would anticipate that the work on the middle field would be done before we start any construction on any of these projects. The superintendent agrees with your sentence. Um, I'm proud of that. So we have litigation on the middle school, and I did speak up on the little trial um, later this year. So it's hard for me to opine on exactly when that construction would start, but based on court dates that I know of, I would just say prior to any bills other bills in this area. It could line up with the middle school project, depending on how the state goes up, but that would be Right. Because one of the things we have talked about is whether Patriot should get the proof to not the middle school being up front, up near the front of um, the property list. You got a question? Yes. 
Um, I have two questions, and I don't know that they're really ones that you would be able to answer right now, but things to take into consideration. Um, one is that the facilities master plan two committee is all employees of the town, and I wonder if that might be um, positively impacted by including some others from town, um, and how that's done in other towns. Um, that would help my understanding. Um, and the other is when we're talking about funding, um, if I recall facilities master plan one, we approved the whole plan um, together at one town meeting, and then we approved the funding as it was needed. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to learn how this is going to work so that we don't get like two or three projects in and then everybody goes like, we're tired of paying and we're not going to. Now, in terms of funding, can I turn the microphone over to the town manager? We talked about this earlier, but I didn't turn this again. So I, I wasn't even our first in my plan, but um, just looking back at the other, just like what we did was adopted the plan. So we didn't invite people to go, but the plan was introduced to town meeting and was formally adopted as a resolution by the town. Um, and that's how we kind of body of the program. So what we're doing is how the facilities master our plan committee, and, and some of the reasons why. I need a little bit more about the smaller group right now because we're on a accelerated timeline because we're trying to be ready for this main town meeting. And we're really only talking about funding. Um, because all of this work has already been done. And this is a very different program, right? So facility master plan one, it really focused on town buildings. Facility master plan two really focused on school building, which means that we'll have a school building committee, which will do the work that facility master plan one really did, building down some of the details and the data. Um, so we're we're lucky that we're able to do that. Particularly since the MSB is funded, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so one of the things that we are doing, and the reason that we're, we're working so diligently on funding, is that we're looking at, at different factors. Um, one, what debt is falling off, right? So we get the next 15 years, you know, we're going to get million dollars debt is falling off. Which is going to pay off? Money that the last year in budget for debt payments. Can we do that last year for 100000 Right, we'll be able to do that because it's going to be building. So we're trying to figure out in different scenarios how to least impact the taxpayer so that people will buy in to be able to do all these great projects that are really hurting people in their pockets. And that's kind of our intent. It takes time and but we're getting there. It's great. I was going to say something similar too in regards to your first question, which was about the process. The school capacity stuff to me did the same work that the facility master plan did last time. I was on that one as well. And so, and Dan can attest to you on it, it was, well, Chrissy not um, figure out how to make it work. But the same, it just it was broken out instead of one to the other. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? The reason that I wanted to point out that Chrissy is here and Adam is here is if questions occur to you after this meeting, by all means you can talk to any of us, but also Aaron and Chrissy, who's very involved in this, are resources as well. So if you have any questions about the process, they are happy to have you ask them. If they don't know the answer, they'll ask us and we'll get the answer. But if you're more comfortable talking to one of them than us, then by all means, we want you to be able to do so. Yeah, I, Jim, I'd just say I'm encouraged to, um, you know, we have a lot of community involvement. We had staff input too this past spring. I mean, I, I, that was a, probably the most uh, answered survey I think we've ever done, about 800 responses. Um, but the staff will have built on the back of the hand. I mean, it is, um, in order to make training and, and uh, can be really helpful too. Um, in terms of getting that information. So. But certainly, um, Chrissy and Ms. O'Loughlin and Ms. Principal uh, are very awesome. One of our goals in doing all the community outreach and the surveys, um, and the, we had other public, we had public forums during the process before the recommendation. One of our goals was so that when we got to the end, somebody didn't say, Have you thought about this? And I know for a fact that it's going to, that's how many, and somebody's going to ask me, you think about this, but we certainly tried. That was our goal. 
Any other questions? Has this been helpful? Informative? One of the things. Thank you.